Hey guys, this is Eos, and today I'm going to show you a technique for taking a song that you're working on and creating some fast, clicky percussion without doing a lot of work. Um, here's what the song sounds like right now. I'm just going to jump right into the drop. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna use the the drums that we already have here, and we're gonna gonna end up uh, creating extra layers of these that we will pitch up, um, shorten the transient of, and change the duration of the clip to create eighth notes or sixteenth notes, most likely. At least that's what I'm planning on. We'll see what we end up with. So I duplicated the track. Now I'm gonna freeze it or flatten it. Sorry. Okay. So now I've got a first note of every measure in here. Um, let's do control J to consolidate it. All right, so now I can change this to beats transient mode, turn that down and I can divide the time of this. So here's what it sounds like. Let's turn it down a little bit. And let's create a couple different versions of this. I'm also going to clip it using a free plugin called G Clip. Just to make sure I'm not getting too pokey of a transient. Copy this one and make a couple more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and consolidate it and then continue from here. So I'll shorten the transient again, go to forward stop mode. All right, now let's see if we can't. Let's go and delete all these other ones. And let's see if we can work these into the arrangement we already have. And I'm going to start off by just soloing the, draw, the kick and snare. So I don't get confused as to, because I might process these differently. I'm going to put them on different layers.
It's not quite the feeling I'm going for, so I'm going to speed it up again. But first I'm going to consolidate, because sometimes you reach the amount that you can speed it up. Still a little bit too clicky for me. Let's add an erosion. Let's use a transient shaper. Now I'm just trying to give this some character. Try a plugin called Texture on this as well. in F and we're in D flat. Let's probably use some different sound than this, but Thank <laughs> you. 
freeze this down and see what it looks like as audio. So I'm going to try out some stretching on these. They still sound a little bit strange to me. Not quite flowing with the song, a little too poppy on these quick ones. <laughs> Sometimes I'll leave these as pop, as more like popping little noises, and sometimes I'll I'll end up texturing them and turning them into some other sort of percussion through using tools like erosion and that tool texture. And I'm going to show you how to do it one more way with envelope followers and chain groups. Um, let's duplicate this again. Consolidating these hits. Checking out these different warp modes, see if any of them sound better.
All right, so let's go in here to the modulators. If you don't have Ableton 11 and Ableton 10, you can use the LFOs that are in Max for Live. Same difference. Or sorry, not LFOs, envelope followers. I have a thing installed called Live Enhancement Suite that lets me add some things. I still have to write some more of the script for it, but you can add a uh, quick, quick plugin adding from there. Um, so I just made a utility so that I can group it. And this will be the dry, create a chain. This will be noise. So on the dry, I'm going to turn off the output, and then I'm going to map this to, oops, I do need another utility, I need this utility in the noise one. So this dry one is just to get the signal from the click, um, and then going to happen is I want All right, so let's, uh, this is what the shimmer sounds like in general. So let's make some macros and explain what I did here um, a little better. So there's a dry signal that's just receiving this pop from the kick. And then we have an envelope follower that uh, has a bunch of controls, but we'll map all of these. The gain, rise, fall, and uh, delay. So this will do an offset. So if you wanted to create a more an off-grid rhythm... And I'm going to go in this noise channel also and do a little more EQ sculpting. And adding that feedback kind of gives it that little flicker, which is interesting. So the rise and fall in all of these, this is does exactly what it explains. It, how long, once it, re, once it receives a signal, does it take to rise to its max value? And then how long does it fall? The gain will add uh, input input gain. So if you have a really quiet signal, you might have to use, use this. Or... Uh, if you want it to, to like hit a lot, hit differently... Um, hitting differently. Um, if you wanted to hit differently, you could do that. And you don't have to use Valhalla Shimmer. You can use any tools you want, but um, you're just trying to create something that you can drive with, drive 
with that percussive signal and the envelope follower. All right, we'll call this percussion texturizer. And I'll save that and then uh, drop it in my drums. I hope that stuff was helpful for you guys and I'll come back with more tips soon.